In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you some crazy trim path tricks. Hi guys, my name is Manu. We'll cover some basics first, then get into the crazy stuff. So let's get started. The basics. We add a simple stroke using the pen tool. And add trim paths right here in the add menu. Let's open the trim path property. So trim paths lets you animate the start and end of your stroke and the offset. Let's quickly animate the start from zero to 100 with two keyframes. Same with the end. Zero and 100. We see nothing cause the animations cancel each other out. So let's offset the end animation. And select all keyframes, open the graph editor to edit the speed graph. Then slow down the beginning and the end of the animations. And as quickly as that, we created an organic line animation. If there are several strokes in one shape layer, you could either add trim path to one of the shapes to animate just that shape, or you could add it to the whole group, which animates all strokes at once or one after the other. Always starting with the top one, so you might have to change the order of your shapes. If you right-click on your text layer and create shapes from it, it works for tile animations as well. Add trim paths and animate the shapes individually to get a text reveal. Let's take a quick moment and check out an amazing in-depth animation course by Domestica. In this course, you'll learn how to create expressive typography in motion with After Effects. Design letter forms in Illustrator and animate them in After Effects. Start with research and references, color, then design a lettered phrase in Illustrator. In After Effects, animate it using kinetic typography. I've added the link to the course in the description. And even better, use the code manualismotion10 for an extra 10% off. All right, we have an animated path here, going from right of the center further to the right. Then once again, we go to the Add menu, and this time we add a repeater. Set copies to 9. Then open the transform property of the repeater and set position back to 0. Instead, we rotate the lines around the center, 40 degrees. And we just created a nice little graphic explosion. You can change between simultaneously and individually as well, of course. And nothing happens, because in this case, the repeater needs to be above the trim path property. It's nine copies, which then are animated one after the other. Check out the free project file for all these explosions. Now, let's do some of the nerdy stuff I know you've been waiting for. Again, there's a simple line, and we want to move a point along the line. So first of all, we duplicate the layer. Name the new one point, set the stroke width to 120 pixels. Then we go into the stroke property and set line cap to round cap. Again, we add trim paths. Let's move it out of the shape. And this time we link the end point to the start point, which equals them. But we open the expression field. And if we add plus 0.1 to the end of the endpoint expression, we have a round shape. Magic? No, we simply added 0.1 to the end value, which is awesome, because if we now animate the start value, the end value follows along, always adding 0.1%. Let's quickly do this using two keyframes. And let's quickly smooth the animation, adjusting the speed curve. So, let's take it one step further. Let's say we want to link another object to this point. The create nulls from path script doesn't work, because the points stay at the same position. We need to read out the position of the start property and link another object to that. First of all, let's add a null object. Then, let's add an expression control to it, a slider control, and link the start value to the slider control. We delete the start keyframes and are now able to use the slider to animate the point. Awesome! We add an expression to the position property of the null to link the null to our point. Let's add an expression. First of all, let's define where the information comes from. A layer 
is the name of the variable equals, we link the layer to it, semicolon in the end. Next, we need the path property of the point layer. We ignore this error. B path is the second variable equals, we link the path to it where the information comes from, semicolon in the end. Then let's read out the position value, meaning we read out the number of the slider control and turn it into position values for the null object. And the toComp expression does exactly that. A layer dot toComp, and in parentheses, we need to add a value. Where do we find that value? Somewhere on the path. So in parentheses, we add B path dot point on path. Parentheses. And this expression expects a percentage value. <laughs> Luckily, we have one, the slider control. So let's link the slider to the expression. We need to divide it by 100 though. 0.5 is read as 50%, for example. The error message is gone, <laughs> yay, and here we go. The null follows along, easy to link some more elements to it now, simply by linking them to the null. You might ask yourself, why not simply animate an object along a path, by copying the path and adding it to the position property of the object? Much easier. Yeah, maybe. But if you want the object to be flexible and bent in curves, it doesn't work. Which brings me to the next crazy trick. I recently did a short about animating arrows, so this is an improved version. Using the pen tool, we draw the path. We want the arrow to move along. Then, let's name the shape arrow. We open the contents property and add trim paths directly to the shape. Then, we duplicate the shape Let's name the top one arrow head, the bottom one arrow. Next, we open both path properties and link the bottom path to the top one. So whenever we change the path, we actually change both. In the arrow head trim path property, we link the end to the star. Then, in the arrow shape, we link the start to the upper star. And the end to the upper star as well. It's all zero, so first of all, let's add plus eight maybe to the end of the arrow head. All right. Next, let's go into the stroke and increase the stroke width. And then in taper, depending on the direction you want the arrow to point to, we set the start or end length to 100%. <laughs> let's close some of the properties. And here's the first part of the arrow. Let's get to the second part. We subtract minus 20 from the end this time. And you might see this tiny gap here. To be sure it looks fine, we add plus one to the start. And again, in stroke, we adjust the stroke width. In taper, we set the start length to 100 and add some start width. All that's left is to animate the start point with two keyframes. Check out the links in the description. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and hit the bell, because you don't want to miss my next video. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye!